Hi there, so welcome back to Substance Painter and in this lecture we're going to do this. We're going to create this bow, we're going to paint it up and this, what you're seeing here, is going to be the end result. Um, so if I, I, can, I can rotate my environment in the background because the bow has been lit by the environment. This is how you kind of move your lighting around if you like because the environment is, is effectively your lighting. So you can see there, that's pretty cool. Um, I've done a few things to this that uh, will hopefully show you a few techniques, like I've put this sticker on the front here, and I've put sort of burnt charred sort of marks in and around the bow. So it looks like it's been used for fire. Um, yeah, and it's got obviously quite shiny, but the paint is not as shiny as the metal. So I'll show you how to do all that, rust and everything else. So, so this is our go for this lecture. It might split into two. I'm going to see how it goes, but there's going to be a lot of fast forwarding. So if I if I say to you paint this, I'm going to show you how to do it, and then you'll see me do it in fast forward because sometimes these can take quite a while to create and um, doing all the objects we need to do is going to take a fair while but I'm gonna, like like other lectures I'm going to try and introduce new things to it as we go along so uh, with each lecture okay so here we go start with a, a blank sheet with uh, nothing go and open your saved so if you've got recent files you should be able to find your steel barrel and load it up like that so we're back to here again um, or go to the folder um, where you saved it if you can't see it in your recent files go into the folder and unload it up okay so now so basically we're going to start painting it now and the way I think about this is to think about the object and you want to layer it up from the from the bottom out if you like so this is a steel barrel so when it was made it was made of steel and it would have been bare steel basically and that's kind of how I think about things I, I think about them you know what's the base layer and then what would have been put on top of that and then maybe we've got some dirt and oh it's got rusty and you know so then I just layer it up and layer it up and layer it up and that's kind of a good way to think about it especially something like this a sort of hard a hard object like this so over here on your right hand side uh, where it says layer one just highlight that and delete it we don't want that layer so it's gone so the first thing we want to do let's just talk about these um, little icons over here so these are these are the ones that are going to control your layers to some degree so over, you know if you've got a layer selected that's going to remove the selected layer uh, over there we let's just add a folder so if you've got lots of layers and you want to collect them into a sort of a generalized folder you can sort of do that and then you can minimize that folder and then keep them really well organized which is quite handy um, and you've got add a smart material and that's one of these down here smart material so you can add add that um, add a fill layer and these basically let you just add layers and different elements to your stack basically to your your stack of layers so we'll be using these now so we've got nothing here at the moment All right so over here um, where it says texture set settings this is what I was talking about before saying I'd come back to it um, and this is the sort of channels we're gonna bake as an initial bake onto our drum and we need to do this and we're ready to start painting into them now we can add so we've got here we've got base color obviously that's our albedo we've got a height map we've got a roughness which will be our smoothness when we when we export it obviously we've got metallic uh, and we, we know what that is and we've got a normal map and uh, if you want to add a new one which we do we just add ambient occlusion so we click on plus here and we select ambient occlusion from this big list and we can have custom ones as well but we won't do that we can add a um, yeah custom layer but just select ambient occlusion and it will add it down there to the list okay so now we're going to this is another way of adding additional maps so if you've got you know like 
at the start when we loaded the scene we could have added the maps there well you can still do it here so you can select these and you can put specific maps into the normal map slot um, so we've got normal here if you wanted to if you already had a map you could select this and bring it in and assign it to the normal slot for our barrel as a base as a base layer we can add more normals so you know it's not like that's it um, okay so first thing we need to do is bake these bake these channels down bake these layers down and um, we just click on this bake here and we get this window now I'm not going to change anything in here just a couple of things so normal world space normal just leave those because it uses all these to um, do various calculations when we add add layers down it will use these um, and curvature it will use all this stuff and thickness to calculate you know our materials uh, the only thing we don't need at this time we can tick ID off and I'll, I'll cover that in, an, in another lecture and what ID is so we need to set you know we're going to be using that so um, yeah so just tick that off for now our output size is currently 2k and that's fine that's what we're going to output to anyway but you know you can change this size at any time throughout your painting process because because substance is is um lossless it doesn't you know if i change that to 1k it doesn't reduce the texture size it recalculates what the material should look like at that size and if you bring it up again it doesn't scale it up it recalculates so it doesn't lose any of the quality and you can take it up to 4k and it will recalculate um, the 4k material um, so it's you know it's a lossless um, system which is just really awesome so if you're working on multiple platforms for example so if you're working on you know say say um, mobile product and a PlayStation 4 product you might bake out 4k texture for your PlayStation game and then reduce it down to like a 1k or 512k um, or even lower like it goes down to 32 up to 8k so anything in between there and it won't you won't lose any of the quality no matter what size it is so that's really handy um, so we're going to leave the output size at 2k for now and you know it's over here too in the settings so we can change that as we go along if we want to and you can see we've got our ambient inclusion just tick off the idea we don't need that and then down the bottom bake steel bow matte textures material textures so we just select that <clears throat> let it do its thing like so You probably won't notice much when it's done and there it is done and you can see the ambient occlusion has been baked into it and we're going to use that map because i like to because in in, in unity we're going to use the screen space ambient occlusion so we can bake some of our ambient occlusion into the model and it just gives it a nice um, you know a bit more of a defi defined shape i just really like doing that i mean it's optional you don't have to do it but you know it's up to you it's your, it's your art so you can do whatever you want so that's all that's all and we'll do that that baking with every object when we start so that's that bit done so now we've got to start thinking about okay so what's this made of it's made of steel so i think i'd like to put a steel texture steel material as a base layer on my bow because that's what it is it's a steel bow so in our materials down here we're going to look for some steel and if you scroll down and we've got some steel we've got rust steel we've got steel rough let's just have a look so if you just click it drag it up into the layers window and then let go it'll automatically put it on there for you like that and you can look at that and go hmm uh, do I like that? No, let's just delete that. Uh, let's try the steel rust one. So drag that up there like that. Boom. And there we are. We have a steel rust one. Uh, see, that's a bit too smooth for my liking. Uh, just I prefer the other one. So let's delete that. 
and uh, bring that back in again see how easy that is in the old days that would have been a lot more complicated okay so that's just the base layer and we can change this base layer and if you look around at the barrel at some point you will see the seam see there's our uv seam down there look can you see that and we don't want that we don't want that seam to appear like that can you see okay so I'm, the thing to do is to change the projection of that texture so so that's our first layer and down here is the properties with that selected this is the properties for that layer here so the first one on this is projection and we've got a uv projection so it's projecting directly onto the uvs as is you know directly so we want to tra change that to triplanar and what that does is project i think it's three different angles onto the bow and what it what it will do what it will give us is a seamless a seamless texture so it gets rid of the seam and it projects it in, in several different ways which is really clever you know i don't know how you would begin to write code for this kind of stuff but just the idea in itself is pretty cool okay so that's the first thing so we did that we leave bilinear hq as is and then we can scale the actual material uh, and we can do various things to it so here we can scale so we can make you know we can really scale it so it's really high detail or we can put it back i think i put it on two like that yeah that seems about right um offset you can offset the uv so you can spin it around and that sometimes is it's quite handy if you've got a very specific object and you want to line up some textures on it but in this case it's just, it's just a round bow it doesn't matter too much where that is um and you can spin it around and you can see our scene working really cleverly there that you can as you spin it around if you look down this area here you can see how it blends how it blends the texture to form you know to disguise the seams and it's just really clever um, but you know horizontal blend is pretty cool actually um, because of the nature of the bow you get that sort of sense that it's flowing in this direction so we'll we'll do a horizontal ro uv rotation on that um, which is pretty cool um, and hardness doesn't change too much it will change the the um, hardness of this of the um, triplanar projection so if you if you move it you can see it see it coming and going um, and what it does do that's quite handy to be able to change that because um, it does kind of blur it you know you might not want too much of a blur but in this case you know it works particularly well and it doesn't really matter too much and it's our base layer anyway so so down here this is the channels it's using in that material so it's using a base color i can turn that off just by clicking it i can sort of turn it off or i can turn it back on again obviously just by clicking off on uh, it's not using a height map you can see it's um it doesn't make no difference because there's no height height um, channel in that material so it's just turned off um, this is the roughness and that's going to tell us how, how um, shiny this object is basically which will be our smoothness when we get it into uh, um, unity obviously this is metal if you haven't got that on it looks a bit plasticky so you know obviously we need that on and our normal map we need that because it's giving us our bumps and stuff and ambient occlusion and these these here are all the ones we set down here when we first baked them on so this material is is um using all the channels well not all of them it's using the channels that are available uh, but leaving out ones that it doesn't need to use by switching them off effectively um, so below that we can add you know, if I click on this we can add more a different material if you want to on top of this material I'm not going to do that because I want the steel rough um, 
channel mapping yeah which is just telling you again we don't need to look at that so the parameters we've got some parameters here seed you can leave it random and this is just steel color so you might just want to change the color of it perhaps um you know a bit darker i think i had it darker um before because it's quite bright that yeah uh, much darker steel is quite cool uh, yeah so we bring that down and this is your roughness so we can make it you know, ultra glossy <laughs> it just looks a bit ridiculous uh, it's very cool but it doesn't work for our barrel uh, it's not what barrels look like or we can make it dull as a dull thing and that's just not good and so we just pull it back until we're happy with it let's turn up our exposure here slightly so we can and the exposure is kind of like your brightness just so that we can see it a bit better there we go um let's pull down the roughness a bit more because that's still a bit dull yeah, it's looking quite cool a bit more there we go and there's our steel bow right off the production line obviously ours has got dents in it but you know that's what it would have looked like without any dents and bumps when it was made effectively probably did have dents and bumps in it but um that's cool okay so that's the first stage next stage is what would they have done to it painted it yeah they probably would have so we're going to add another layer on top of this and this is going to be uh, just add a fill layer up there on this line of icons at the top just select just hover over add a fill layer and click and it will add a fill layer and they don't freak out when it goes white um, because what you're effectively doing is completely wiping out your steel rough if you turn it off it's still behind it's still there and remember what i said it renders what did i say well if i didn't i'm going to tell you now it renders from the bottom up so what it's doing is putting the steel rough on and it's going oh you've just added another layer and it's full of this color and i'm just going to put that on top because you haven't told me to do anything else with it so that's basically basically what it's done it's still kept on you know it's got our habit inclusion baked in there and it's still showing the normal maps from the steel because there's no normal or anything on this fill layer here we want to be able to see through this we are going to add a mask so what this is going to do is expose the steel below so right click right click on the fill layer and then add a black mask and there's our steel back and what you've just done there is said you said i've just got this layer on but i'm going to mask it out completely so i can expose the steel rough below so it's rendering up here then it's putting that layer on and it's looking at the mask and going there's nothing you know you've masked it out so i'm just going to wipe that out and i'm just going to render this steel rough so it's going like that basically render render delete this the white but now what we can, what we can do now is we can paint into our into our mask um we can paint into it so if we change our color in fact, let's just delete our mask so if we remove our mask it comes back and our fill layer we can come down here and it's using color height rough metal normal ambient occlusion um, and we probably don't want to use all those not for our paint uh, but we'll leave them on for now um, this is our base color here so we want to change that to whatever sort of color barrel you want and my example before was green so we're going to do a green one and later i'm going to show you how to knock out lots of different colored barrels really really quickly once you've set all this up if you wanted a different color barrel literally within 10 seconds you can export and you've got another color barrel and it's so quick it'll amaze you so choose a color so put it on dynamic here and you'll get your color bar like this um, and then choose a color and I'm going to go for a, much, a sort of a darker green because that's what I showed you at the start I mean you can be can be any color you want you know, if you don't want a green one choose a different color it's entirely up to you whatever color you choose um, 
um, but I quite like the green one, sort of British, British racing green. Pull it down. Yeah. Just have a look at that. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Maybe a bit less saturation. Okay, adjust the saturation here. Or I can increase the value of it. See, V for value, saturation over here. And H for the color, the actual hue. Um, still a bit. Bring the value down. And we know all about values because we learned that at the start of uh, the course. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Yep, there's my green. Hope you've chosen your colour. So I'll just tick that off. Um, and there we go, that's a good start. And it's still, it's quite shiny. I don't want it to be quite as shiny as that. Um, so we can come down here um, and we can make our paint as shiny as we want it. I want it to be quite a dull colour because paint is not metal. So that's why we've got metal switched off here. It's It's paint. You know, it's on top of metal, but it's not metal. Um, so that's what it would look like if, if it was metallic paint, which is okay. So that would be a metal green, and it's not nice. We just don't want any any metalness on this. And we want it to be quite dull. I want it to be a dull paint, and you'll see why in a minute. Now let's just tick this off a minute. Let's have a look at our steel rough here let's just bring the roughness back up on that a little bit um uh, back down let's just give it a bit of shyness right what we're going to do now let's turn that back on dull paint so we're going to let the shininess of the steel below come through the paint because if you think about this this paint this barrel i just adjusted the wrong thing there Make sure you got your right your layers selected when you're adjusting things. So where was I? So yeah, so if you think about your barrel and the life of it, it would have gone through quite a lot. It would have gone through um, dents, rolling on the ground, you know, all sorts of things would have happened to it. And by the time it gets into our woods where where it's gonna live, it would have been through probably a lot of bad stuff and caused a lot of denting dirt and all sorts all over it so the next thing we want to do is add some of that that destruction if you like to our barrel 